parcel arrived in the post this morning and it's a Stuart Double Ten V all the way from the Netherlands. This is part one, the overview. What's wrong with it? You will notice that I'm opening the box in a sensible manner. Normally I would use a Viking battle axe or a sword, but now I'm using a very blunt surgical scalpel. That's because today I'm being more sensible than usual. And here's what I find inside the bubble wrap, a Stuart Models Double Ten V with reversing gear. The customer reports that it doesn't run very well at all, sometimes needs a push to start, and has no power. What are my first impressions? The engine seems to be quite well engineered. I don't like the way that the flywheel is such a great distance from the eccentrics right on the end of the crankshaft. I'll have a close look at this. The flywheel is loose on the crankshaft and there's some play in the front bearing, but none of this is too bad, and doesn't explain the problems that the owner's having with the engine. First of all, I'm putting some lubricating oil into the compressed air connector. That makes sure that the cylinders receive adequate lubrication. I don't run the engine for very long though. Before I do that, I need to lubricate every moving part that I can see. The crankshaft, the big ends, the small ends, the cross heads and the eccentrics. And of course, not forgetting to apply some oil to the expansion links. That should be OK now, so it's time to open the valve to admit the compressed air. And the first thing I can hear is some compressed air going into the steam chest and blowing straight out of the exhaust outlet. This is not a good sign, but it could be something else. Eventually when I rotate the crankshaft the engine starts. And as you can see the flywheel is a bit eccentric, I don't like that, but I can live with it for the moment. I don't intend to do much with the flywheel because this is out of a model boat and I'm sure if I move the flywheel back nearer the eccentrics the drive shaft extension won't connect to the propeller shaft. So it's time to take it apart, starting with the steam chest cover and removing the four 7BA nuts. You will notice on this engine that two of the studs are longer to hold the bracket to support the reversing mechanism. I need to break the seal between the steam chest cover and the steam chest. For this, I'm using my blunt scalpel once again. A quick health and safety warning, when using surgical scalpels, be very careful you don't perform surgery on yourself. And I almost forgot, always wear eye protection in case the blade breaks. What I'm doing at the moment is rotating the crankshaft to have a look at the valve events, and they're a little bit bizarre. I'm going to leave it like this for the moment, and put the steam chest cover back in place, because I want to have a feel at the valve setting. Initially, once the engine's back together, I'm going to set the valve timing wrong, so it's well advanced and see what happens. From my experience, this does not seem to be a piston blow-by problem. Maybe the pistons will be okay, I'll have a look at them in another video. The valve timing seems to be very hit or miss on this engine. It's reluctant to start sometimes, and as the owner of the engine pointed out, it has no power at all. Someone's done a repair to the other eccentric sheave using a massive grub screw, but this one's still original with a very small slotted grub screw in place. Resetting the valve timing has made a very slight difference, but it's only at one end of the stroke. The next part of the job is very fiddly. These are very small bolts with not a lot of access. I need to take off the inlet manifold so I can apply compressed air to each side of the engine individually. First of all this side. Now this is basically a single cylinder steam engine dragging the dead weight of another single cylinder steam engine is going to make matters worse. Have you ever seen the video that featured this double ten steam engine? It has a very poorly made crankshaft which is a write off. From the first video I'm constantly asked if this engine is for sale and the answer is no definitely not. If I do wish to dispose of any engines that I don't fancy rebuilding, I give them to my friend Nigel who is disabled. And my good friend Nigel sells the bits and pieces that I give him on eBay and he keeps the proceeds to just help him exist. Even though most days he can hardly get out of bed and walk around, the government seemed to think he's fit for work and took away a lot of his benefits. Back to the job, so why have I brought this into the picture? Well this engine's okay. If you think about it, it had a damaged crankshaft, that's why it's no good. But the valve events were always fairly good. What I'm going to do though, in this episode, I'm not going to give you the solution. Here's the other engine that I'm working on, and here's the valve in the steam chest, pretty much like the other one. It goes up and down, it uncovers the ports. 
And here it is again. It's a bit dirty and oily and not very well made, but as you can see, the valve goes up and down and uncovers the ports. Once again, this is the one I'm working on that's come from the Netherlands, and this doesn't work. So now it's time for the keyboard warriors, armchair engineers and general experts to tell me what's wrong with it. And before I get a deluge of comments from all these experts, please be aware I do know what's wrong with it. I know a little bit about this subject. But feel free to comment and discuss it amongst yourselves. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it, well, interesting. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.